Hey guys, Hamas Tornay here with some more Tech It Legends. This time I'm showing off the improvements I've made to the base, they've been quite extensive, and my new oil refinery setup. As you can see, you enter here, not much to see, but I have this item teleport pipe feed right into this crystal chest, which is a very high tier chest, and the crystal one only just allows you to peer upon what's inside, so you can look at it the inside and the outside. And I have it fed into the chest here, which goes through a sorting system, turning any ores into dust, into ingots, and separating anything else into the energy condenser to diamonds. But to make it short, you just have to load stuff in like that, and instantly eats them. As you can see in my hotbar, I have four al alchemical bags. They're all very useful, they hold massive amounts of items, and I have a ton of stuff in here. If you're wondering why, I'm trying to mass produce a high voltage solar panel which takes 512 solar panels. So I'm trying to get all the resources necessary at 512 solar panels and go. This white one, I have a bunch of stuff related to industrial craft just so I can more easily sort it, keep it stabilized. Red one contains a bunch of build craft pipes very necessary for constructing if you look behind you can see that there's pipes back there and the green one is where I store more most of the junk from the quarry as you can see lots of cobble you just shove that in there and it instantly starts turning it to diamonds so I just have to go through this multiple times or just dump it in just here automatic diamonds the way it works is any that goes in there gets sorted depending on but it is a little bit buggy that's why I'm not using it right now because it's quite simple just to hold shift and have everything go in now anything without an EMC value such as ores can't go in that's why the system exists but to run all this I need electricity so if we come down here we can see there's two machines down here so far I only need rotary macerator and the induction furnace here, they both they both gain efficiency as they work, so they're a lot more faster than tier one counterparts. As you, as you can see, I have an MFSU here that works as the power of this base. I have this medium voltage transformer because this is bringing out a lot of high voltage, so I need to change that into medium voltage. These machines load i did if you notice i did have a what's it called a high uh, no an ev voltage yeah yeah the hv transform but i don't actually need that since that's required for turning extreme voltage into high voltage but i'm only dealing with high voltage now down here i have my refinery i have these two pumps here pumping water to these combustion engines so they produce well, they, they shove that energy right into this refinery here. It's working at peak capacity with three combustion engines. And it the refinery takes in oil from the top here. And ref, no, not, no, that's actually, no, no, no. It's actually in the back. Or how exactly am I getting oil? Now that I think about it. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, that's how, as you can see here, up that one apparently. Oh, it's right here. This is actually a facade. So if I come around here, you can actually see that there's a pipe under there. I could break the floor a bit. Put that back. So it's actually a facade and there's oil running down right under it. To produce the fuel and that fuel is getting pumped out I think the only problem is that this redstone engine isn't like powerful enough to pull it out fast enough but that's okay and it's instantly being teleported right into the steel tank here as you can see there's quite a bit of oil over 300,000 units and in the secondary pipe I have tons of oil almost a million I'm almost I'm already at almost at a quarter of capacity so I can't I can't find the oil fast enough now if we go lower which 
by coming up here. Come down this ladder here. It takes you through the refinery area. And you descend down into the depths. Now the reason I'm going so far is because if you noticed here in slot 9 of my hotbar, I have a dual uranium cell. To power everything, I use the reactor with 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 reactor chambers. The setup looks like this. Place it in there, and nothing's happening. But when I activate the lever, you hear that hum, it's all working. As you can see, this is a finely tuned device. If it can go wrong, it will, so I have to be very careful. Before, I was using a quad uranium cell, which was working fine, except for the fact that it was overheating the vents very, very quickly, which causes a lot of problems. If the vent fails and it destroys itself, it's going to lead to heat, to cooling issues, which will cause more heat vents to fail. And if this thing overheats, it will explode from 0 to 20% heat because it's it, it's based off of the whatever the heat capacity is at the time from 0 to 20 is fine that's an okay amount of heat to have but from 20 to 30 that's when flammable blocks around the area will start igniting now from 30 to i believe it was 30 to 80 that's when it starts emitting deadly radiation and just being down here will kill mobs and as soon as it passes 80, there is a chance that keeps growing in percentage. As long as the heat remains above 80, that will cause this to explode. Now at 100% heat, this thing has definitely exploded. Now I'm keeping all this cooled by, because the dual uranium cell, the way it works is, you can place just one in, and it will produce 4 EU a tick. And it lasts for a very long time, that's why it's very efficient. Now when you have a dual uranium cell, you would think, well if you have two, that's another four EU. So that's eight EU per tick. But what actually happens is it's actually it's actually sixteen, I believe, or twenty. No no, they produce five EU per tick. So you'd think that now they produce ten. But what happens is when one of these rods pulses, the other one feels it and it pulses back and it doubles the, the speed that they pulse and generate electricity. So instead of getting 10, you're actually getting 20, because each time it pulses, the other one pulses, and that feeds into each other, and it doubles how many pulses you get per tick. So right now, this is producing about 20 EU per tick, and with the quad uranium, you can imagine how much that is. It's 5, then it pulses to another 3. So that's 20 from just one rod, it produces about 80 EU per tick, but more EU per tick it produces is directly correlated to the amount of heat it produces. So I'm using a dual uranium cell now because as you can see with these damage bars, they're actually moving very slowly, which is great. That means that it's heating very slowly and it's able to cool off faster. These reactor heat vents here can be placed anywhere in this device. They'll pull heat from their uranium cell and then cool themselves off. And the heat vents will cool anything around them, the one, two, three, four, like that. The heat exchangers will automatically try to pool heat so it's even in the area. That's why there's that, it's like that because these ones all get heat and then it pushes the heat around to even it out and it helps sustain the temperature. And that's how I, I maintain this equilibrium of energy to heat. Because I need to produce lots of power, but at the same time, I don't want it to explode on me. And that's also why I'm trying to produce the high voltage solar panel, because it produces a ton of electricity at the cost of an insane amount of resources. As you can see, it's not actually charging. Odd. I wonder why. Let's go. Oh. Not wearing my lap pack. So it appears that at two, the uh, rate that it's charging probably isn't a whole lot as compared to four, which is fine. It's still producing more speed than I need right now. 
And if so, I can just move it back to the quad uranium cell. So right there, that's known as the tier 1 nuclear generator. It's very safe, low chance to explode. So we're coming back up here. And I don't believe there's anything else I need to show you that's new. Which does finally, since we're already at the wrapping up point. So I believe the last thing I'll show you. Mistake. So the last thing I'll show you is the new mining. The, yeah, the, the new quarry that I set up way over here. As you can see, you could probably notice the frame over there when I was turning. So we come over here, as you can see there's another island. If the minimap was working properly, it's still pretty buggy, like I know in the other recordings. It was actually showing up fine. This time it's not. So if you come over here, you can see the new quarry set up. Spiders. And this cobblestone structure, that's the new mining well that I built. You can see it descends all the way down there. I don't actually think that that's all oil. That's actually one of the abyssal stone pieces. That water. You show up over here. This is the new mining quarry. It's quite large. It runs on two combustion engines powering a quarry. Even then, two isn't quite enough. As you can see, it's depleting energy faster than taking it in. But it's working at a nice pace for me. And then I built this oil called well, not an oil refinery an oil well pump out all the oil and it's immediately teleported so with this view i'll see you guys next time